Time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News medical contributor, Dr. Tara Narula, and this morning, Francis Largeman Roth, a registered dietitian and nutritionist and author of Eating in Color. First up, the rising incidence of melanoma. Skin cancer is the most common form of cancer in the U.S. While melanoma accounts for relatively few of those cases, it's skin cancer's deadliest form. The American Medical Association Journal Dermatology compared rates from 2009 with rates expected for this year. The journal estimates that over 76,000 cases of invasive melanoma will be diagnosed in 2016. That's 9,000 more cases than in 2009. The lifetime risk of developing invasive melanoma also rose to 1 in 54. That's up from 1 in 58 seven years ago. Invasive melanoma is when the cancer penetrates deeper into the skin and may spread to other areas of the body. What are the risk factors for this, Tara? So important to recognize the risk factors, Anthony, because this is is estimated to cause about 10,000 deaths in the year 2016 alone. So the first risk factor is ultraviolet ray exposure or sunlight. And it can be chronic exposure or it can be intense intermittent exposure, mm -hmm. particularly at younger ages in childhood or adolescence if you've suffered several sunburns. The UV rays damage the DNA. Another risk factor is something that's just genetic. So there's a familial type of melanoma that accounts for about 10%. Important to know your family history. Did my mom or dad or siblings have melanoma? Yeah. Phenotypic traits like light hair, light skin, freckles, um, those people can be at higher risk. In addition, if you have what are called atypical nevi or moles, some of those can progress. If you're immunosuppressed or take any medications that might immunosuppress you, and if you've had a prior history of skin cancer or melanoma, you're at higher risk. Tara, we know that it's important to be vigilant about changes in your skin as far as it concerns melanoma. What specific changes should people be looking for? So one mnemonic that people can remember easily is A, B, C, D, E. So the A stands for asymmetry. If the lesion is asymmetric, meaning one half looks different from the other half. The B stands for borders. If the borders are irregular or ragged, that might be concerning. C is for color. So if it's not a uniform color, but there's variations in the color of the lesion. D is for diameter. If the diameter is increasing or greater than six millimeters, that's concerning. And the E is evolution or change in any f shape of, of the type of lesion that you're looking at. In addition, if it's inflamed, if it's bleeding, crusting, or if you have a lack of sensation in that area, that might raise an alarm bell. And finally, there's something called the ugly duckling sign. So most moles are <laughs> okay. nearby, yes, look the same. So if you see one that stands out as the ugly duckling, you might yeah. want to point that one out. Okay, <laughs> look out for the ugly duckling. Uh, Francis, vitamin D is important for everybody, but some people have to avoid the sun. So yes. are there Dietary options to kind of make up for this? Absolutely. So fatty fish is a wonderful source. And you're going to be getting about 450 IUs of vitamin D in three ounces of salmon. Tuna, canned tuna is another wonderful source. And eggs, but do not throw out the yolks because that is where the vitamin D is. And also fortified milk. People forget that milk is a great source as well. And fortified cereal. All right, all things on my grocery checklist. <laughs> Next up, the American dining table. Much in life has changed over the last 30 years, including our food preferences. The Pew Research Center, using U.S. Department of Agriculture data, looked at how America's eating habits have evolved over the decades. In 2014, we preferred more chicken, more cheese, and sweeteners derived from corn. Back in 1970, it was more beef, more milk, and more cane sugar. Okay, so what does this practically mean? What, 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 what of these changes, Francis? Well, we're changing, but not necessarily for the better. So beef is down, chicken is up, um, we're eating a ton more yogurt. We're e yogurt consumption is up 1,700%. And yogurt often has a lot of sugar in From it too, 1970, right? yes. yeah. So, and, and fruit and vegetable consumption is down. So we're sort of trading things off, and this is what happens. You know, dietary recommendations change, and so we change with them. Um, but we're sort of, you know, it, it's, it's really uh, haphazard a little bit, uh, the way that we're doing this. So um, I'd love to see some more progress in the next 30 years when we look at these again. Yeah, well, <laughs> fingers crossed. Tara, what's changed in terms of how much we eat? It's not a pretty picture, mm -hmm. Anthony. <laughs> so in 2010, we consumed about 2,500 calories. That's more than we really need on a daily basis, and it's 23% up from 1970. So the typical 40-year-old male, average height and weight, moderately active, needs about 2,400 calories a day. Same goes for female, same type of female needs about 1,850 calories a day. So again, more than what we need to maintain our weight. In addition, as Francis mentioned, the ratios are shifting. So 
about 46% of our calories were from flours, grains, fats, and oils, and only 8% was from fruits and vegetables. This oh. number, 457 cal more calories, is huge than yeah. 1970. Mm -hmm. And we're getting all these great pieces of bad news and high calories at the peak of the holiday season, right. Francis. So what's a, what's a family to do? What, what are the pro tips here? Okay, well, remember moderation. Everybody forgets about that. So you can still enjoy all those holiday treats, but, you know, pick your favorite. Pick your favorite and move on. And then what I always try to encourage people to do is take those family favorites and try them with whole grain flour, half of it. So I just made biscotti and snickerdoodles and I, I subbed half of the white flour for whole wheat flour, turned out perfectly. And stick to those monounsaturated oils, olive oil, avocado oils are fantastic. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna indulge with Jean-Georges who's coming up in oh. a moment here, so <laughs> I'll have to take the exception now. All right, Dr. Tara, Dr. Tara Narula and Francis Lodgman-Roth, thank you both for being here.